Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very, very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Flytanium and Demco Arcade, utilizing the Shark Lock. That is so cool. I've been EDCing this knife just for a bit. I wanted to get this review done quickly because I am extremely excited about this knife. 2023 has been an amazing year for knives, but with every new amazing knife that I handle and think it can't get better than this, something else comes along. And today that something else is the Arcade. Uh, I will link this knife right down in the description so that you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Flytanium for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's get something out of the way real quick. Flytanium, so it's made in China, right? No, it's actually made in Taiwan. Flytanium is the designer or co-designer, and they're utilizing the Demco Shark Lock, which is, of course, uh, it made its debut on the Demco AD20 and is probably better known on the AD20.5 just because the 20.5 is the one that's more, it, it's way easier to obtain. Um, the Shark Lock was invented by Andrew Demko, uh, who is the same person who invented the Triad Lock. The Shark Lock is the exact same strength, if not stronger, than the Triad Lock, which is really cool because it is way easier to use and uh, it's fully ambidextrous, which, I mean, essentially makes it a perfect lock. Um, so it's really cool to see it in something else outside of the uh, AD20.5. And I'm really hoping that this model is indicative of more models in the future coming with the Shark Lock. It really is a lock that, that should be on a lot of different stuff. So that, that's really cool. Let's go ahead and measure this thing. Overall length, not a huge knife, but a great size for EDC. It's about 7.65 inches. Blade length is about yeah, three and a quarter, just barely three and a quarter. Cutting edges, actually shy of three inches, about 2.95 inches. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see it's closer to the size of the Rat 2, but it's got a little more presence to it. So it's not quite, doesn't really feel like a small knife. How about up against the AD20.5? Yeah. For some people, the AD20.5 will still be a better knife, but I venture to guess for a lot of people, <laughs> this will be... They will be uh, uh, buying this in addition to. They might you might have the AD twenty point five, and you might be uh, buying the arcade. There are a lot of reasons to buy the arcade over the AD twenty point five. There, are, um, you know, the AD twenty point five obviously comes in a drop pointer. It's more of a clip point blade, I guess, and it comes in in the shark's foot blade. Um, I uh, a lot of people I think aesthetically will prefer the arcade uh, or just for the less sort of confining ergonomic lines because while the AD20.5 is comfortable it's kind of got two positions where it's like locking you in and you can see here that there's a little bit more freedom even though we have the same amount of handle room there's a little bit more ergonomic freedom in the arcade so it also definitely comes off as a more refined knife if you're wondering. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely close to the size of the Para 3. And then finally, I think maybe, where is it? The um, Benchmade bug out, there it is. Or uh, how about the uh, Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Alrighty. So how's the action? Well, the action's amazing. I'm sure you could have guessed that. The Shark Lock is incredibly fidgety and stupidly simple to use. I mean, it's almost like the Shark Lock has been with us throughout the evolution of human beings, right? It's just been right there, just as a normal thing, right? Like a stick or a rock. We just, the earliest humans learned how to use sticks and rocks and the Shark Lock as primitive tools. It really feels like it is that perfectly catered to your hands. It is so silly easy to manipulate. And that is a good thing, right? A lot of um, FUDs like to say, oh, fidget factor. Oh, I miss the days when it just took, you know, like a normal knife just takes 10 or so hours to get it out with two hands. And then you, you cut and then you take another 10 hours to get it away. Ain't no fussing around, messing around with this fidget factor. Yeah, 
uh, it, it turns out that speed and convenience actually aid utility, which I know is an insane concept to wrap your mind around. But yeah, um, things can be both is what I'm saying, right? It can be fun to play with and at the same time, an unbelievable convenience. <laughs> I would argue that you spend much more time fussing around with that silly lockback or freaking slip joint than you ever would with this. Because you just get it out and get it done, you put it away, and then you're done, right? <laughs> it's silly. Um, it's, it's, it's just a funny argument that comes up sometimes. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it's really great. And the thumb studs work perfectly. I mean, you can reverse flick it out or whatever you want, right? Maybe they'll make a version of this with a slot. That would be really cool. But for now, the thumb studs just work perfectly. This The action's perfect. I, I wouldn't change a single thing. Um, the shark lock feels exactly the same as it does on the AD 20.5. It's wonderful. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's actually a little bit thinner. Is it? I think it's almost as thin as the bug out. Let's put it up against the bug out. Just slightly thicker. It's so funny because it feels like a much more robust object. But yeah, really not um, you know overly thick. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. This guy really isn't going to take up any more room in the pocket than the Para 3 does closed. In terms of height, it does approach the Para 3, but it's still not quite there. Really, in and out of the pocket, this... It's It's been an amazing carry knife. Materials. I got confused about this in the unboxing. This is actually aluminum. My goodness, does it feel like titanium. Uh, this feels like blasted titanium, and it's the way, it's the the dip that they said. I think they said it was like gray dipped aluminum or something. I don't know if it's actually dipped or we just call it that. Um, wow, I really thought it was titanium. It is aluminum and G10, and that's part of how they got the cost down. I was looking at the price on this, and I was like, that is ridiculous for, um, you know, something that's made in Taiwan. We got S35VN, and I was thinking titanium and G10, and it came with two sets of scales. You get alternate color scales with your purchase of this thing, which is pretty cool, right? That's a lot of value. I know I'm going to sound like an infomercial here, but adding all those things up, execution, extra materials, right? Unique locking mechanism, uh, all of that. Uh, that's a lot of value wrapped up into the price, which is 200 bucks. And I was kind of like, what? Um, how are you guys doing this? Um, now it makes a lot more sense that it's aluminum. Now, does that make it not a good value? Uh, absolutely not. It, it, it makes it a phenomenal value either way. <laughs> It doesn't bother me at all that it's aluminum. It's lightweight. It's strong, right? It basically can't corrode. I mean, technically, aluminum can, right? But you, you, you're not going to do it. Not unless you're just trying to leave it at the bottom of the ocean, right? Um, yeah, it really does feel like titanium. You have so many different options, too, with the colors. And you, it's cool to be able to switch out the scales. I mean, I, you guys might have seen me unbox this. It had the... Uh, I didn't even realize the other scales were in there. And then when I did find them, I thought that Flytanium just sent me an extra set. And then I look at the website and I'm like, oh, no, I didn't get any special treatment. They just do this. Like, this is just part of the package, which is cool. I wish more companies would do that. Yeah, I switched my uh, OD green ones for the uh, black G10 ones, and I think it looks great. You get a, this, These even have different texturing, too. Very cool. So, yeah, it's, it's aluminum, S35EN, uh, which is great. It's one of my favorite steels ever. Um, and then we have uh, G10 or my card or whatever you want. But you have a few different options. You can get a black blade. You can get black aluminum, right? Uh, you can get green aluminum. Hopefully they continue to make different versions because I'm, man, just super cool. The weight. How much does this weigh? They do have some internal milling on the inside. Can we see in there? Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. Just take my word for it. It weighs three and a half ounces, which is great. I don't. It's a three and a quarter inch blade. Three and a half ounces of weight. That's just fantastic. I have no issues with that whatsoever. How about a... Hardware check. Let me get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. There it is. It's T8. If you didn't see it, just take my word for it. T8. Nope, I'm wrong. That's that's incorrect. The pivot is actually a T10. These screws here are T6, same with the pocket clip screws. I know that because I had to take them out, switch the scales. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, taking apart a shark lock knife is actually very easy, but there's a coil spring that's housed in a little slot inside of the, uh, the actual um, shark lock. Now, this is sandwiched between 
little pieces of steel right there. So it's not, the spring cannot come out unless you take it apart. Once you take it apart, that spring can come out and it can come out with a lot of force. So much force that it will launch itself across the room. How do I know this? Because I did that one time. It took me an hour and a half to find that screw. If you're going to take this knife apart, put a piece of Tupperware over it or something, a bag when you're taking it apart because that spring, I promise you, will fly out of there. And if you lose it, it's re- it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely annoying. Um, but outside of that, it's actually very easy to take apart and put back together if it's anything like the 20.5, which I'm certain it's almost the same thing. Um, make sure you have the right tools for the job and you should be good to go. And seriously, put a piece of Tupperware over it. Um, okay, let's do um, blade stock thickness. So I'm going to guess that's, I don't know. I mean, I want to say it's it's going to be 125, but maybe maybe it's uh, not. No, it's on the money. <laughs> 125,000. Okay. I think it's time for the meat and potatoes, wouldn't you say? Wow, what a good looking knife. I, I think it's just spectacular to get the shark lock on something else. Not that I'm sick of the 8020.5. The 8020.5 is... One of, if not the very best EDC, it might just be the very best EDC folding knife of all time, right? It's really, really great. Um, there is one obvious thing. I'm, I'm, we're going to do the a little bit of a comparison here, a little bit of a head-to-head to save myself from doing this in a separate upload. There's one major benefit to the AD 20.5. And outside of that, I think a lot of it will be preference. And if you don't care about this, I think a lot of people will pretty much automatically go with um, the new arcade because it, it it really is very much more appealing in a lot of ways. In this section of the review, I uh, went on this big long rant about how uh, the knife isn't milled out for lefties. And as you can see here, that is completely untrue. Underneath the scale on the opposite side, there is of course a second hole indicating that uh, the clip can absolutely be mounted for left-handed carry, um, but it will require uh, an inlay um, that actually has the holes in it, which I am almost certain Flytanium makes. So I just wanted to point that out. It may get mentioned later in the video that it's not milled out for lefties. I'll try to edit those parts out, but if I miss one, I just wanted to let you guys know there is definitely a second hole there. Okay, back to the review. The ergonomic lines are definitely less confining. This is a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I, I think that was obviously, you know, that, that was intentional, right? You still have the choke up zone. This is an obvious choke up zone. I love that Demco has the sense to bring that jimping out far enough that it actually matters. Why do companies cut it off right here? No, we're not, do- most of us aren't doing this. A lot of us are actually using our thumbs and bearing down depending on what we're doing. But it, when it's not there and you need to do that, it's so slippery. So this is nice. Not only is it functional, it actually extends out and that's great. The positioning of the thumb studs is fantastic. The machining of the aluminum and the G10 is also fantastic. The transition from the aluminum to G10 is beautiful. I would think Riot did this, right? Uh, really nice. Edges right here, I think, could be slightly knocked down. And it's only when I squeeze really hard. And even then, it's really not that bad, right? Um, not bad at all. This, it looks like blasting. I am certain will scratch up. I, I don't think that really matters. Um, this is the type of knife that people are going to take out and use, definitely. It screams to be used. Um, uh, absolutely. Thumb studs are great. They work. They're nothing special. They're a little bit fancy because they're all like kind of slightly different colors. The um, Initially, I kind of was like, why didn't they bring the inlay material up further? But I kind of like it in the middle. I don't know. You know, I mean, it would have looked great up here too, but I think it looks great down here. They only did it sort of halfway up. It's fine. It's kind of stylish, right? I think it looks good. Uh, the corners of the shark lock are still just a little bit, you know, it's kind of the same way with um, this guy. Now, over time, they have sort of knocked themselves down. Uh, if it if it's a little bit too sharp, you can get a little, you know, you could get some sandpaper and just knock the edges down. I, every now and then I hear people like, oh, 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 I'm going to go, I'm going to type up a negative review on Reddit because the sides of the shark lock, they have injured my delicate fingers. My skin is the same consistency as grape skin. <laughs> you, <laughs> you miserable troll. Um, yeah, just knock it down a little bit with some sandpaper, right? Like shove that, like throw a pie in that guy's face and and be on your way because that's not a real complaint. 
Sometimes people also complain that the shark lock digs into their hand like this. I think if you are really choking up, like if you're really squeezing as hard as you possibly can and you are positioning your hand intentionally in a way where that shark lock digs in and you are repeatedly cutting material like this, right? If you, you're setting this up to intentionally cause pain in this part of it, then maybe. But I would be wearing gloves in that situation. I mean, even in a situation that does not call for all of that, I would still be wearing gloves. Most of the time, you're going to be holding the knife like this, and that thing clears your hand, right? So it's only specifically when you are choking up. And even then, even then, I think that's a stretch. So I don't, uh, you know, if you're seeking my validation, I'm not going to validate that complaint. I think that's silly. I think that's just noise. Um, but uh, you can think whatever you want. Um, I uh, Ergonomically, I think this thing is great. And the pocket clip is an absolute improvement over the standard clip that comes on the 8020.5. I had it replaced with the Lynch clip. To me, the original clip is um, about as offensive as the um, the standard Spyderco clip. It looks very similar. And while this used to be a clip that I enjoyed a lot, it's very snaggy. And same way with the uh, standard, um, you know, uh, AD 20.5 clip. This this is just grabbing. It's like I say, if you walk by a merry uh, merry go round, you're you're gonna go with it because it's it's gonna grab. This is a massive improvement. It's it's shorter. It's deep carry. Could have been nested. Um, but yeah, ergonomically, I think it's great. Uh, the um, so, do I have a chip in this already? Oh, no. It's just debris. Um, but uh, the the blade, like I said, you can get it in drop point or uh, coated. Uh, we've got a flat that carries out about 50% the length of the blade. Nice swedge. Very classic blade shape. They're not trying to do anything crazy here. Just trying to make a good uh, blade. A little sharpening troll there. I think they did a good job with this. The S35EN seems to be holding up, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have not used this thing nearly long enough to know for sure how their heat treatment is. We have a lanyard slot that's pretty much out of the way. I think that's a classy way to do that. For people who don't care, uh, it, it just looks like a little design embellishment, right? And for people who actually use lanyards, all seven of you, um, you have a spot. There's a couple of standoffs. That's fine. Um, the, uh, the pocket clip, I think I was about to uh, compliment the design of the pocket clip. Um, even though it's not nested, we have the drop and a subtle swoop, which means in and out of the pocket is a breeze and it's nowhere near as snaggy and it doesn't create a real, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to know that it's there. Like you can feel it, but it's not, you know, there's barely any bill. So it's not, and the edges of the bill are also knocked down. So you're not, it's not really a hot spot in any way. How's the lock up? It's completely and totally solid. It's it's the shark lock. That's it. That's how it's going to be, right? There is no stick or anything like that. There is no uh, pivot lash. It's very smooth in here, and the shark lock obviously keeps the blade held in place extremely well, extremely well. And we also have a perfectly centered blade. Yeah. It's, this is extremely recommendable, guys. It's, it's, this is wonderful. Personally, I think the ultimate version of this knife would be if they decided to put a sheep's foot or worn cliff blade on it. You do that, and you've essentially got a perfect knife, right? Very cool stuff. Highly recommendable. It's going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist. It's also going to go in my most recommended knives playlist. And you will absolutely see this knife at the end of the year on this channel in my best of 2023 upload. Thank you again to Flytanium for sending this in. Like I said, this guy will be linked right down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.